the addition of figured hardwoods to your project can be the thing that really makes it. But some woodworkers are taken back by the additional expense. In this video, I'd like to show you how you can introduce the process of book matching to minimize your cost and maximize your yield. I have these three panels here for an upcoming project. They're very beautiful bird's eye maple. They're only seven and three quarter inches wide, and I need a 14 inch panel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to rip this along the thickness on the bandsaw and book match them. The two pieces will open up like a book and present a mirror image of the bird's eye figure. So let, I'm gonna start off on the jointer and then take it to the bandsaw and I'd like to show you the process. So at the jointer, I made one face of my board flat and at least one edge. You'll notice I didn't, uh, I didn't worry about getting it perfectly clear. I want to keep as much material as possible and save it for when I do my final milling. So I'm just getting a reference for flat and that's enough for me to put against the fence for when I resaw. So now that I've run all three boards through the bandsaw, let's get an idea of what our bookmatch panels will look like. You can see the beautiful uh, mirror image that this bird's eye maple is presenting once it's bookmatched. How, how the figure makes the chevron pattern. It's really nice. They look fantastic together. And by using only one board to get each panel instead of two, I've cut my material cost in half. But I do have something that's really important to consider now is that I'm not at my final thickness. These need to be glued together and milled. If I were to do that right now, they would cup a great deal. The reason being that when it was kiln dried, it was an inch thick and there was still some moisture trapped in the center. But once we rip it down the center, we're exposing that moisture and it can evacuate. To prevent this from cupping, before we mill it to our final thickness, we're going to need to sticker stack it. And I'd like to show you that process. So I've stacked my boards with these small blocks in between. I've kept them in pairs. What this does is it allows the air to flow through and evacuate that moisture. After I have them stacked with the block in between, and make sure you have one on the bottom too, we want every surface of our wood to be exposed to air. I'll then take an extra board, put it on top, and put a couple of cinder blocks on top of it. I let this store at least overnight. The more time, the better, probably a week. That'll let your, your boards come to a nice even balance and then they'll be ready to mill and they'll be ready to be our panels in our upcoming project. Thanks for watching this shop secret. Subscribe for more woodworking videos.